The real issue with social media is how do you integrate it all and manage it? So you've created fantastic content, you've got your objectives, you know what you're doing. How do you then join it all together for the business? The big thing to remember is social media is simply another channel. It's here to stay, it's not a fad, it's not going anywhere at all. You need somehow to make sure that the CEO or whoever the most senior person is within the organization actually wants to get engaged with social media. If they don't want to get involved, it's not going anywhere. You also need to make sure that anybody involved in social media in the organization clearly understands the brand values. I'll give you an example. There was a very well-known airline and they were organizing a competition that I thought was very ill-advised and they were doing this on Twitter and it was called the Scary Halloween Competition. But when this got shortened, an airline was organizing a scary competition. Now, I don't want to hear the word airline and scary in the same sentence. It's enough as I can get into a plane, I don't want to be scared at the same time. So you need to understand what are the brand values, what are words your organization will be using, um, what are words they won't be using, what's important to them. You can't be flippant. If you're going to be very flippant and you're a professional organization, you can't take it back afterwards. So it's okay for somebody to say, yes, we did that for a laugh, but it, if that has an impact on the share price or on the target audience, it isn't okay. So the brand values and the brand voice have got to be agreed from the outset, along with the brand image. What is the image you want to create? And you, as marketing professionals, may need to organize a workshop within your own organization where you look at images that will and that won't work, that you're happy to see and you're not happy to see. And equally, words that you're happy to use and words that are definitely on the no list with the business that you're in. When you've organized all of that, the real issue then is sharing. And I think very early on, Susanna mentioned something about social media policy. And in the absence of a policy, staff and customers will do their own thing. They'll do whatever they want to do. So you've got to decide how much you want to share, with whom, when, um, how, and who's going to be responsible for doing it. So do you want them to know, for example, there's a a consultant that I know who's having flying lessons in a helicopter. I think this might be too much information for his particular customer base, who are generally um, manufacturers in the north of England. I think his manufacturers might leave him if they know that he's, he could afford to pay for flying lessons for a private helicopter. It's not necessarily a good message. That's something he could share with his closest friends, but I don't think he should have pictures of himself sitting in the cockpit saying, hi, I'm spending all your money on every Monday morning. I don't think that's a good message. So you've got to decide what is it you're sharing and how. And there's a really big, big issue here. Do you do it inside the organization? Do you get an agency to help? Now, I've seen companies doing both, and it works. But the agency has got to be very, very close to the company. They've got to totally understand the brand. They've got to totally understand the objectives. They've got to be part of that business planning and marketing planning process so that they are integrated within the organization to the degree where they know what would be and what wouldn't be acceptable. Because if they make a mistake, and it has a, a negative impact on your business. There's very little you can do. But overall, whatever you're doing, the activities for social media should be built into your marketing action plan. They should go into the annual communications plan. So when you're looking at your January through to December, it's not just about, right, what's our PR plan here? Are we doing any conferences and events? Are we going to be writing any blog articles? It's where else does that fit in? You've got to slice it all the way through the plan. If it isn't within the plan, it's not going to happen. And it won't be integrated. It'll be too bitty. You also should adopt best practice, whether that's for your particular market sector or within your particular industry area. 
And by doing that, you need to look at some social media tools that I'm going to show you in a moment. But you do need to think about what are the business processes? What are the customer journey? Um, I don't think customer service can be done well through Twitter unless you've got staff able to respond 24-7. We were, for example, um, moving offices from one building to the building next door, and our telephone line provider cut us off for three days. No broadband, no telephones, nothing for three days. And it was one of these issues where they were saying everywhere, shouting loudly from the rooftops, that they had customer service through Twitter. What they didn't say was customer service on Twitter finished at 4 o'clock on Friday and didn't come back till 9 o'clock on Monday. If you have a customer service issue, the chances are it's later on in the day or it's at the weekend. So on that basis, if you're going to deliver customer service through Twitter, you need to really think through those processes. When Tesco's and the other supermarkets started to open their stores 24-7, people didn't buy more food picked different times when they went shopping, but we, we didn't start eating more food. We might be buying more of other products, but we're still eating the same amount of food. So all that did was that spread out the cost base, widened the cost base. So again, think about those business processes and your customer journey and what they go through and where would and wouldn't work for you. But staff will need training in social media. You can't just assume that because they're using Facebook for themselves, they'll know what to do for the business. And, uh, for example, my 19-year-old nephew, who I think is fabulous, and he knows exactly how Facebook works, I wouldn't want him in charge of a Facebook company page because he will have a different idea with what's okay to go on Facebook and what isn't okay. And the what isn't okay is practically nothing. So you need to give people training. If you don't give them training, they will make it up. They will do their own thing. They need templates. They need guidelines. So if you're on LinkedIn, you can give them. These are the words that we use to talk about the company on LinkedIn. These are the key phrases that we use that are OK. These phrases are not OK. We don't use them. It's also worthwhile, whatever you're doing online, looking to see how you can create key responses to frequently asked questions. Because you might find in the very early days when you start to lift your head above the parapet and, and use social media, that you get the same questions repeated over and over again. And that's where it's useful if you've got a space within your intranet with a list of your own questions, you, your own knowledge base, effectively. Um, but in terms of social media policy, and I'm going to ask the, the lawyer in the room to cover her ears because this is quite scary, 44% of companies, and this was an online survey conducted by e-consultancy in August and September this year. So it was conducted this year, 44% of all companies, and these are not small businesses, have no social media policy in place whatsoever. Nothing. 40% have broad guidelines in place. It's, it's probably the one line that says anything you do that brings the company into disrepute will mean that you will get a written warning. Now, will the 19-year-old read that and understand? That means if you put anything about the company on Facebook that isn't good, you're out of here. They may not understand it. It's not specific. Only 16% of companies had specific guidelines in place. And that's very, very scary. You can either go to um, solicitors to get guidelines. There is one website that's actually extremely good. It's a free online policy, but caveat emptor, it's one of those things where it may not necessarily suit you. So if you look up social policy tool online, you can fill it in and create your own social policy. Having said that, I've just paid a solicitor quite a lot of money to create the terms and conditions for a specific website because I needed absolutely every situation to be covered. I wouldn't get that online. So you would treat the online guidelines with caution. It's a good starting point. 
to look at the issues you do need to consider. And it is, of course, based on US law. It's not based on UK law. So there's some critical differences there. Use it as a starting point, but then go to a firm of solicitors and say, this is what we need, and this is why we need it, and get something specific to your own business.